I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Welcome everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. So as I was minding my own business this weekend, came across that there has been some YouTube drama, some exposure of some people, and these people I watch pretty frequently, been had for years, um, and I always kind of knew in the back of my head that something shady was going on. Um, and I don't know, honestly don't know everything about the situation, but I know enough from watching enough and people explaining and just putting the research time in that I have to figure out what exact, exactly is going on in the automotive community on YouTube. Um, it's just one of those things, once you start doing this stuff, and, that, and you're actually a big name, like you just hear about it and things come up through different people. Um, so I just, I had a hunch that uh, something fishy was going on with this person, with this business. Um, I'm just gonna tell you guys straight up, um, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm gonna say about 80 to 90% of YouTube is fake no matter if you're watching pranks there are some people I'm not gonna say that it's everybody like I said 80 90 percent because I've watched a lot of it I've been around for years especially in the automotive market um, so I keep track of what's going on just to keep up to date um, just to keep relevant with everything what's going on in the automotive community um, and usually nine times out of ten when something's too good to be true and this doesn't just go for anything automotive, it's just life in general. If it's too good to be true, 90% of the time it is, nothing comes free without hard work. Um, and, you know, I, I've been trying, you know, I've recently just started my own business, so I've dipped into that side of things where I kind of got a gist of what it takes to run a business. And... Like for instance, for me, I'm doing custom automotive painting, airbrushing, things like that. I'm still building my own cars on the side. I've done that ever since I got my driver's license when I was got, when I was 15, when I first got my car. So I've been building cars, different cars. I've always stayed to like the tuner, the import stuff. I have built some muscle cars and things like that for friends. And I've had some of my own that I've kind of put my time and money into. So I know a lot about a little bit of everything, if that makes sense. So I've been doing it for a lot longer than what you guys are seeing through some of these channels. And there are some channels that have been doing it for a very long time that are not popular. But as far as the business side of stuff, I've, I've dipped into it a little bit. Um, most of my family are entrepreneurs. That's kind of where I got, you know, my habit from. You know, I just kind of stuck my painting to make it a business. Obviously I still have my full-time job, so I'm not going as hardcore as what some of these people are in businesses, but eventually we will get there. And that's kind of why I made this channel to kind of bump that up to give me some more um, eyes out there, network with people that I don't know, because I kind of keep to myself. I don't really market myself really that all that much because I've been burned in the past by a lot of people and so I just kind of keep my head down and just do my own thing. And I'm trying, as I get older, I'm starting to realize that that's majority of your business is putting your neck out there and taking shots, taking risks. And that's just part of the business. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. But um, to get back on track, what I was talking about as far as the business side of running a business and being in the automotive field, you know, you see it a lot, you know, I know as a business, I mean, I'm, I'm technically a business owner. This is a, I've got this as an LLC, so I'm technically a business owner, so I can say this. I know what it takes to get a business up and going. I just haven't fully got to the size of some people because, like I said, I still have my full-time job where I make probably more money, more, you know, more financially responsible than a lot of these people you see on YouTube. So you got to be careful on who you're supporting for one. And you got to watch out because there's a lot of shady people out there. Not just in my, I see a lot in my area. You know, if I go 30 minutes south and go to Indianapolis and I start, you know, talking to people, you know, I hear a lot of stories about just the automotive painting industry, whether it's collision or if it's actually the painting custom side, 
There's a lot of shady people out there who are just out to get your money. Um, and that's why I kind of keep my uh, head low, keep to myself a lot because I, I don't statistically say I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm obviously doing this for a reason. It's a living. I'm trying to make a living, but I'm not out there to, you know, to screw people over or to give false information. I've got a lot of respect and a lot of passion and dedication to this industry. So I, I stick up for a lot of the people that are doing the right things, whether it's going to, you know, reflect back on me or not. Um, I think those people need to have all the respect handed to them because they are doing it the right way. And on the other hand, like I said, there's a lot of people that aren't doing it the right way. And what I found out is through the grapevine of people talking is there's a lot of drama stirring up about Tommy F. Yeah, if you don't know who he is, look him up on YouTube. He's He's got a big following. He likes to do the plus one stock you know they don't go crazy on his builds but he's re you know he technically is restoring these jdm cars gtrs s body chassis stuff and personally i like what he's doing i mean i like the work that his uh, workers are doing but it's always been on that fine line of like i'm watching his stuff and it's like for one, you never see him working on anything. It's just all of his employees, which is fine. You, when you have a business and you're actually the owner, nine times out of 10, the owner doesn't do any of the work. It's he hires people. That's what a business is. So I get that part of it, but he's got a lot of knowledge on it. So I'm just thinking like, why isn't he working? You know, he's always got something to say, but he doesn't really do the work. So it just doesn't, there's something there that's always seemed fishy to me. And their work is really, really good. So, like, um, I know where, I understand where his customers are coming from because he's not some, you know, to me he wasn't some person just trying to hack stuff out. He was actually taking the time and taking, you know, he recently just got a business up and going, a really, really big, um, kind of like a body shop-esque where he does, like, painting and, you know, he does, like, rebuilds motors on cars and things like that it's mostly gtrs and s body chassis really big in jdm stuff nissan stuff um which i kind of dabble a little bit of that but not as much but i won't get into that but just as far as the business side um because i like i said i've been watching them for a very long time and you know it, it kind of felt like to me like he fell off and then he he got back up on board and just like came out of nowhere and just started blowing up and to me, he, there wasn't much going on. He was just doing the same thing over and over again. So I don't know exactly how or where. It just, like I said, it seemed too good to be true um, at the time. And then, you know, as the stuff got, you know, he started putting out more content about what they were doing. I was like, oh, I realized like where they're getting their customers at. They're getting their fan base at, you know, because we're in an era where cars like what they're doing is starting to become um, not only more expensive because we're getting to that 25 year mark where those cars are going to be able to be legally imported over here. So they're starting to rise in price significantly. And he's grabbed onto that little, that little, uh, uh, rope right there and he started tugging it and he's starting to get, you know, into that world a little bit more. And obviously he's got a shit ton of parts and everything, um, to be able to do it. He's got, his guys are really knowledgeable, knowledgeable on it. But be, I look at it into it more than just, you know, what they're doing. I look at it as more like a business um, because I understand coming from not only just me doing, you know, starting into this world, but also, you know, my family has always been running their own businesses. So I know what it takes. It's not easy work. So to, for somebody to go from like a little bit of nothing to blowing up really big as a business, it just, there was something there that was not right to me. So it just, there was always something there that seemed fishy. And I didn't really know exactly what it is. But um, after this weekend, I've, I finally realized that, you know, there's, like I said, I know what it takes to kind of get a business up and going. It takes a lot of um, money up front. So I understand that there are businesses out there that, um, Especially me, I'm trying to get into this um, as well as starting to research it more. But 
um, to get your business up and going, you're going to need a lot of money up front, um, especially if you want to get in it to be big. Um, you know, if you're just fine being a hobbyist or doing, you know, making a little bit of money here and there, you really don't need to build anything big. Like this building I have right now is would be definitely, it'd be fine for most people, but for somebody like me, where I'm starting to run out of room really quickly because of the things I'm doing are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm starting to realize that I'm, I need not only just the space, but I need the better equipment to do what I, I need to do and the level of quality I want to do. So it takes a lot of money, whether that's from people, you know, that, you know, kind of give it to you as a loan or you go get a business loan. I understand that part of it. And I know 90% of the businesses, especially small businesses, they start out as that. So I get that. Um, and I get where this whole thing went wrong because I've seen the videos um, of people talking about it. So initially what happened was is somebody, um, I'm not going to name their channel, but they have they've came out and said that they want people to share this. And I don't know the person. I don't care but i think it's the right thing to do to kind of make light of it um that way more people are understanding what's going on because it's not just this person doing this it's multiple people um in business if you want to call it that or the youtube world more likely that are you know getting one over on somebody else is not the right to me it's not the right way to do things i know a lot of business people are shady they do they do anything they can to screw people over to get ahead on you know for themselves and they don't care about anybody else and this is kind of like this is this is what this is pretty much to me you know somebody was trying to lend a helping hand you know they're trying to do things the right way um gave them a lot of money you know over a course of uh, i don't know if it's been a year or two years i don't know the timeline but they gave them a you know, over six figures of money to kind of help this person out to get going. And then once they get going, the business doesn't give back to that. You know, they don't, they don't pretty much repay it. They don't pay their loan back. They just take the money and run and they make up excuses. And that's one thing that really bothers me. It's not necessarily about, you know, whether Tommy FBI does good or not. I could care less, especially now. You know, I, I used to wash their stuff, but I'm going to stop. Um, because I just don't like supporting people like that. I feel like I'm a pretty honest person and and I want to be transparent with everybody because there is a lot of shady stuff that you can run into in this world as um, if you're wanting to get your car fixed or whatever, if you want to get painted or you know send it somewhere to get mechanical work done. There's just a lot of shady people out there who are going to screw you over. Um, and this is just one piece of the puzzle that indicates that and you know just to make their life better um and just to you know get that fame that's that's the one problem with today's world is everybody they got this youtube back in my day youtube wasn't a thing to make money nobody knew about it nobody really cared it was just a a thing to go on there and watch music videos or whatever look up information on stuff we never knew that you could get paid on it um and make it a business well now since everybody realizes that social media you can get big enough you can make it a business they're starting to go out and do things they normally wouldn't do to get in that spotlight and that's one thing i want to i want to stress here on my channel is i didn't start this to get money to you know one up somebody else or get over on somebody or you know to, to crap on people but I did this because I, you know, this is my passion. This is my career that I've I've chose since day one. Um, before I got out of high school, this is what I decided that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So, and I'm using YouTube just as another tool to get my name out there and get more work drummed up and just make a name for myself because it's not easy. I mean, I'll, I'll give people, um, you know. There's a lot of things that you have to do that people don't understand just to get your name out there. So there's people like, you know, Tommy F. Yeah, that stole a lot of, you know, whether you're calling it stealing or not, it's, it is stealing. Like if you're not, if you, you made a promise to somebody, made a promise to somebody and you didn't keep it and you didn't pay them back, 
that's technically stealing. And then you use that money for something else. They're always making up excuses. Like I said, I don't know the full story, but I know enough that it's just, it rubs my skin the wrong way. It, people like this is what destroys this um, industry. Um, and whether it's totally true or not, I, I mean, I wouldn't think somebody would go out there on a limb and just say all this stuff. And it's just not one person. It's multiple people that have automotive channels that are going out there and making videos now and you know i'm coming from the paint side of it which they dip into a little bit of the paint side of it because i do restore the engine bays and things like that they don't really fully paint cars but um it's all to me it's all one big industry as far as whether you're on the performance mechanical side or if you're on the collision painting refinishing whatever side i think it's all under the same tent to me so I have a big um, respect for the industry and like I'm really dedicated to it and I'm not here to to bash or to try to get one up on, on anybody. Usually um, if I make a mistake, I'm the first one to say, hey, you know, bring whatever it is, bring it back, like let me fix it and make it right rather than saying, oh no, go screw yourself. Um, that's essentially what they're doing. You know, they're making up excuses to why they can't pay this person back. So um, it just rubs me the wrong way. And I want a lot of the people that probably watch him are the younger crowd. So they're not going to fully understand the the business aspect of it. Because to launch your business as fast as they did, like I said, it just... To me, it, it was really fishy that they blew up that fast. And that he was spending that amount of money that quickly on things that were just laying around. You know, I get having a hobby, I get coming from a rich family background, but when you're nobody and you're, you don't have that, it's really hard to um, really get a business up and going that quickly, unless you have a lot of power or you have a lot of money or you just have a family that's a lot, that has both. Um, and I've been there, you know, I'm not really, the poorest person out there, you know, I do really well for myself. That's why I keep my day job is because I, like I said, I probably make more than what some of these YouTubers, these automotive channels that you guys, you know, bend over backwards and get on your knees and pray to them. You know, I probably do a lot better than those, those people do. And I work, you know, you could say I work a nine to five, but being a painter, if you're, if you know anything about painting in a, in a collision field on a commission type pay, you know, you go in there, you get as much work as you can done. You make as much money as you can or you want. And you get the stuff that they need done. You make your money. You can leave whenever you want. You can come and go as you as you want. And that's kind of why I, I got drawn into the painting field because I realized that from the early on is if you're a hustler and you're motivated and you want to do good work and you do do good work and it shows and you build a name for yourself, you know, you're going to crush a lot of people just because you're you're that much hungrier. Um, and that's one thing I, that's another reason why I made this channel is, uh, is to make light of, you know, how this industry actually works. Um, there's a lot of working, moving pieces to it, um, especially if you want to be in like the collision side of it. It's, it's, it's kind of like a conveyor belt system. It's just a production type. Um, and a lot of shops, a lot of these bigger shops, they just... You know, the body guy does their thing, the painter and the preppers do their thing. You know, everybody has their place. And if you're if you're able to crank stuff out and do good work and you're really fast at it, you can make a ton of money. You know, I make a, I know a lot of painters that make, you know, almost two hundred grand a year, well over hundred and fifty grand a year. And they do really well for themselves. You know, they bust their butt when they go to work, they get off around three or four in the afternoon. They go home. They don't have to worry about anything else. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now in my career as a painter is, you know, I'm, I've got a name built for myself that I do good work because I care so much about what I do that I can go in there, bust out four or five cars in a day within, you know, a few hours, make four or five hundred bucks, go home by four, you know, come out here in the shop and work and do the things that I want to do or, you know, have, you know, start building the business I want to build for the long term because this is all leading towards, 
you know, passing it on to somebody else once it gets to that point or teaching people or, you know, teaching these younger kids that skilled trades is, is where it's at right now. You know, it was always when I was growing up, it was always go to college, go to college, go to college. Well, now college is not praised like it used to be when we were kids. It's all about being an entrepreneur. You know, social media has done so much for the small businesses, but it's also taken away the workers for those businesses to stay alive right now. So a lot of people don't want to work because they can fund their, you know, they can pay their rent and their bills and stuff doing other things besides going to 9 to 5 every day, which I understand because that's what I'm trying to do myself, but I'm also having that balance with having a full-time career as a painter. And I've spent the last almost 19 years in this industry and I've got, like I said, I've got a lot of respect for it. I've got a lot of um, dedication towards it. You know, I'm really motivated to keep this industry to where it's it's going to be always thriving. Um, in my area, especially, it kind of it pretty much dropped off once um, you know the people of my generation were big into it. So, like once my generation started having families, having kids, they had to get rid of their cars, and it's just it really dropped off. You, you noticed it big time with car shows and things. And, you know, you could drive down the road and see, you know, three or four custom cars a day. And now you, you don't see one maybe once, twice a month, depending on what time of the year it is. Obviously winter, you don't see that many, but you see custom cars everywhere. Now you don't. So like, I'm trying to really build on that. And that's why I say I'm trying to bring the 2000s back because that's when it was really, really big. Right before I got my driver's license, um, it was really huge. And that's kind of why I got into the tuner world really, really quickly because that's that's the stuff that had the cool paint jobs on it. You know, hot, some of the hot rods had cool paint jobs, but back then everybody was restoring things back to the original. Nothing was really crazy painted in the hot rod scene. So it was always one color stuff. It was always the imports um, that had the crazy paint jobs on it. And that's why I got into painting. And I've, I've quickly learned that I'm really good at it and I do really good work and I care a lot about my quality and the, the people that I do things for. Um, that saying you, you might have heard before that, you know, your, your customers become your friends a lot quicker than your friends come your customers. That's hundred percent true with me. I mean, I've got some really good friends. I've got like four or five, like super best friends that are really into cars and you know, I may never do their stuff because they can, they you know, they know how to do their stuff. They're in the industry as well. So like they know how to do their stuff, which, you know, I don't try to, you know, tell them, Hey, bring your stuff to me. But, um, it's just, it's just the way that the world is, you know, your, your customers become your friends because especially with me, like I said, because I, I don't treat my customers like they're strangers and I, I, since I have a full-time job, I get to pick and choose my customers. So I don't pick and choose the people who are, um, you know, who have an attitude with me or who are upset about things all the time. I pick the people who are cool because I want those people to be my friends at the end of it. I want them to be okay with coming to me if they have any issues or, you know, if they want something done that they're afraid to ask somebody else, they can always come and ask me. I want those people to be more of my friends and my customers because I want to hang around the cool people too. Like that's just how it is. Um, the more, the better, the people you hang around with in life, this is who you're going to be become. So if you want to be, you know, this awesome basketball player, you're not going to hang out with people who are playing golf. It's, you're not, I mean, you're not going to learn anything. You want to hang around the people who are doing what you want to do and who are really good at it because it's just going to mold you into somebody that's really, really good. Um, it's probably going to make you better than them because you're learning from them who are, you know, they might be better than you. So it's just going to make you that much better in the end. Um, but I'm trying to, I'm just kind of rambling here, but it, it all goes together. And the younger people are watching, like I said, um, don't take everything you see online seriously. I know I'm saying this being on YouTube, but um, I am probably one of the fewer channels out there who is really small, and this is why I'm okay with saying this and okay with kind of throwing shade to somebody else right now is because I am small and I don't care. You know, I've got my own life. I'm a nobody to them. They'll probably never hear about me, and that's fine. 
but one day I might get to a point where, you know, I might be big enough. You know, you never know. Um, the world works really weird in different ways. So just be careful who you're, who you're supporting, um, especially if you are one of those younger people. Um, if you're really wanting to get in the car industry and the car scene and you're starting to see all these popular people pop up, um, there's a lot of shady things going on. So just be, just be mindful of that. Watch, what, watch who you hang out with. Watch who you take advice from. Um, because obviously you don't want to take advice from those type of people um, because they're just going to teach you bad habits, whether if they're doing good or not. A lot of it, you'll be hard to press that, you know, a lot of the business people I've I've met that have been, um, they're always nice. I mean, that's, that's one thing about those people who are really successful in business is they're really, really nice to you, but they've always done some shady, shady stuff, whether it be to somebody else or family members just because of money it's always about money and i've i've always you know i've always chased money because that's how i you know it's that's just being on commission that's kind of just it just gets instilled into you to kind of just keep pushing more and more and more and more and more and once you have a taste of it it's really addicting but to actually take something from somebody and give you their word and not give it back or have some type of plan to give it back and just make enough excuses that's that's just a crappy way to go to be honest you know coming from me um i live in a really small town area um even though indianapolis is really really close to me as far as like 20 25 minutes um, south of me you know i live in a really small country farm town and you know your word is everything to you you know i don't care if you're a successful business guy or not you know your word is you know people take that stuff to their grave around here so if you don't have anything but your word, then you're nobody to me, um, and I could care less. Um, so and I, I, I'm sure there's a lot more going on with more people as far as um, that people that have been doing this type of stuff. Um, but, you know, it just it, it really irritates me because I'm really, really, really dedicated to this industry and you know, I want to see things get better because right now they're, they're not good at all. Um, you know, when you look at it as a, as a bigger picture back, especially back from my day, when I first started doing this stuff, this stuff, you know, not just the painting part, but just the automotive industry used to be huge. It used to be one of those fields that everybody wanted to get into. And I want to mean everybody, it was not just guys, it was girls, you know, everybody was dying to get in, um, to learn something, People are doing things and learning things and growing really rapidly fast. And, you know, nowadays it's like you can't even go to a car show without, you know, somebody bashing somebody. Um, the cars are not considered show cars at all. They're just, you know, people stick wheels and tires on their car and some coilovers or air rides and they, they call it a show car. It's just, I um, mean, you don't see really many actual show cars anymore. Um, it's kind of dying off, so um, I'm trying to build that back up, but it's just a different time. It's really weird. Like, everybody's everybody's in this really weird state right now that, um, you know, they're, they're willing to spend the money, but yet they're not. It's just really weird. Um, so if you want to get into, like, the, the custom car scene or just cars in general, you know, just be mindful who you watch, who you take uh, criticism from, who you – you know, stand around who you you hang out with um, because there's a lot of people that will drag you down just to push them back up. And, you know, that's that's just going to destroy it even more, even quicker. And, you know, I wish there was a way to kind of, you know, and almost like an application process that needs to happen. You know, if you have a certain type of car and you're planning on building it, it should be like at the BMV or something like that. you got to get an application to fill out what you're actually doing in the car. If you plan on building it or whatever, you know, what's your background, stuff like Something crazy like that would be kind of funny. But, um, but, yeah, I just wanted to make this video really quick um, just because it's, it's everything that I don't stand for is what's happening. And I see it happening more and more often. Um, and it's just because, you know, it's... They, you know, nothing, I don't know Tommy or anything like that, but just from the way that things were being handled, 
if you're that type of person, I don't want to... I don't want anything to do with you. I don't care if you're making millions. I don't care if you're doing cool car stuff. I don't care what you're doing. It's not somebody that I want to be around, and it shouldn't be any. It shouldn't be somebody that you guys want to be around either, um, especially if you want to get anywhere in life. Like I'm a firm believer that we're only here for a certain amount of time. So all the things that you materialistic things and money and stuff, um, it's only going to get you so far. You know, like I said, your words, I mean, you take that stuff, you take that to your grave. Your word is your word. If you can't stand behind your word, then don't don't promise anybody anything because that's just going to destroy your, your, your life and it's going to destroy everything else past your life. And, you know, I'm not going to get too religious or anything on you because I'm not, but I do believe that your word is something you'll take to your grave and you can't, you know... I was told a long time ago, a coffin doesn't have pockets. You can't take your money with you. You can't take your cool cars. You can't take any of that stuff with you guys. So um, just be mindful, be respectful to everybody, and do always do the right thing. You know, I've said that a million times on my, my channel as well. As long as you're doing the right thing, no matter if you're getting ahead faster than the next guy or not, in the end, it's going to be a lot more... Um, rewarding for you and appreciative of the people around you because you got there doing the right thing and that's well, that's why I think I've gotten so far ahead of life than a lot of people that I've went to school with I mean there's a lot of people that I did go to school with that have got really really far in life and are living really happily and you know they got families that are doing the things they want to do um, but like what I'm trying to say is like you know, I, I didn't have, I lost everything when I, I had, a, I had everything as a kid and I lost it all and I had to build it all back up um, by myself. I lost all my friends um, back in school and I had to build it all back up without anybody. I had a few, I had really two really good, two or three really good friends that kind of stuck it out with me and, you know, always being myself mm -hmm. and always being true to the people around you and being respectful and being honest um, it's got me to where I am today and it's always pushed me to get up every day and do the better, better than I did the b day before. So it just goes to show that, you know, you can always, there's a million snake, there's a lot of snake in the grass. You know, there's a lot of people out there that'll come up and bite you and out there to get you. But, um, I think if you, if you stick to who you are and your true self, then you're going to get a lot further respectfully and you're going to get rewarded a lot better, you know, it's going to mean more to you than it is if you just take it from somebody, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Um, but enough of, enough of my rambling. Um, I just want to, like I said, I want to make this video clear that, you know, I've, I've seen the issues going on. I think it's shady. I think those people need to be stopped, whether they lose all their buddies and pals and they lose their business or they lose whatever i don't really wish that on anybody but you know when you're when you when you make a pact and you you make a promise to somebody and you give them their word and you don't give it back or you don't try to make amends somehow then you're just you're just one of those people out there that deserves to lose everything that's just how i am i'm harsh at times but the world's not a not a not a really good place right now but you know, I think those people, like I said, there needs to be an application process um, that goes along with either, you know, owning a business or anything. Because right now, like I said, people act like they don't have any money. But right now, people are spending money like crazy. And I don't get it because they act like they have nothing. <laughs> I mean, that's just, it's really weird to me how people are acting and how people choose to spend their money. Um, people won't blink an eye at spending 80, 90 grand on a brand new car, but then they'll complain about not having any money and not being able to go on vacation or not be able to go and pay their, you know, their water bill or whatever, not be able to, you know, they'll, they're, they're going to buy $4,000 wheels, but can't afford a, you know, a, a good solid paint job or, uh, to be able to fix the dent in their door 
you know, they can't afford that other small stuff, so their priorities are just shot and they're not in the right mindset, you know. So it's just a weir weir weird world we're living in right now, and I'm just one of them that is trying to make it by, but I'm trying to do it the right way. So I promise you guys, if you stick on this channel, you stick with me, um, I might be a little weird. I might slur my words sometimes. I'm not really a big talker, but I promise you guys that, you know, you're either going to learn something from me on this channel, if you're a painter or not, and if you want to be a painter, that's awesome. Um, but you're going to, you're going to be learning some stuff. You're going to be seeing, um, my growth. You're going to see things change constantly. You're going to see new people around probably. I'm going to try to get to the, um, to the point where I'm comfortable filming, filming other people and being out of the shop filming. Um, but I, I really want to dedicate this channel to um, nothing but painting. And if you guys want to see some car builds like I've been doing on the Civic, um, just let me know in the comments. Um, or if there's anything in general you want to see related to painting, let me know. Um, I've been doing it for a very long time. I, I know a lot of a lot of things, and I'm really, really good at what I do. So just just comment down below, and we'll try to work that into a schedule somehow. Um, but stay tuned, because a lot more is coming. Um, the next couple videos, I don't know how many I want to make, but I've got this canvas that i got to paint for a guy I used to work with that came and bought the, a canvas from me that his wife wants another one done. So that's the next couple videos that are going to be coming out. Um, but... I will always try to be as transparent. I will never try to guide anybody in the wrong direction if you do ask a question. Um, and I always try to um, give out the correct information um, when needed. And if I don't know it, then I'll just simply say, hey, I don't know. Uh, because I, I learn things every day. Everything changes in this industry. Um, constantly every year something new comes out or something some, somebody's doing something's new and it works and never done before there's just stuff constantly coming out and i'm a pretty well-rounded painter there's a lot of you guys probably won't believe me but there's a lot of um artists when i say artists they're doing airbrushing and graphics so as a, there's a lot of better artists out there than me that are doing um unbelievable artwork but the one thing I have up on them is I I can actually paint a car. Like I can actually tear a car down. You know, I know exactly what to do from start to finish to get it whatever color I want. A lot of the a lot of artists that I know that are really, really good at doing, you know, they can they can close their eyes and lay graphics out on a car perfectly, but they don't know how to blend a fender or they don't know how to um, do any type of color change on a car or anything like that. They just know how to do either, you know, graphics, airbrushing, pinstriping. You know, there's a lot of a lot of things that people just stay true to themselves and that's how they became really good. I don't blame them for trying to, you know, learn something else or going out and wasting time trying to figure out stuff. But uh, for me, I, I started doing everything. You know, I started just screwing a lot of stuff up, so I learned really quick on how to do a lot of different stuff. I, I can airbrush. I can lay graphics pretty decently. Um, I airbrush pretty decently. Some of my stuff is really good, and then but I can paint a car really, really, really well, whether it has airbrushing work on it or graphics on it or not. I'm really good at doing a lot of different things. Body work, I'm pretty decent on, as you guys saw. If, you, if you've seen the Honda videos, go back and watch them. If you haven't, I mean, if you haven't seen those videos, go back and watch on them. But I know how to do a lot of stuff because I am around it every single day. I see wrecked cars every single day. I watch body guys fix cars every single day, multiple cars a day. I, you know, I'm painting multiple cars, you know, a lot of cars a week, a lot of cars in a year. I'm painting a lot. Every day I pick up the paint gun. So I know a lot of stuff that a lot of other artists don't recommend. You know, they might know, but they just don't do it. Um, or they might just not know. I've I've heard some artists come out and flat and say, hey, I don't know how to do this. I wish I did, but I just don't because this is what I've always done. But they're, they're awesome at what they do. I mean, I can't, you know, I can't do what they do because... I mean, I've always spent my time doing multiple different other things in the industry rather than just sticking to one thing. I've tried to just stick to one thing, but 
in my area, I can't just be an airbrush artist. And I'm starting to figure out all that stuff with having a business. Most of my customers that are in the area want everything color matched to something or they need something repaired or they need, you know, their helmet painted the master car color. Just basic, for me, it's basic stuff that I don't really want to do. But if you want to have a business and you want to be successful or in my area, that's that's what's going to take. So I'm trying to blend it all together. And that's what this, this channel is mainly about is kind of surviving in a country town as a custom painter slash painter slash whatever you want to call me. You know, I don't really call, call myself an artist, but I am at the same time because the things I do. But I know a lot of different stuff that a lot of people don't know. So if you stick with me, whether it's something small or something big, I swear you're going you're gonna to learn something. So just because I got a, a crazy lazy eye here don't mean anything. So <laughs> I, I, people have been pointing that out to me recently. They're like, you're making YouTube videos and what did anybody say about what you're like? That's just one of those things that if you know me, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, but yeah, just want to make a little video on that, you know, touch base. You know, not necessarily calling anybody out, but I am at the same time because stop doing crappy, shady stuff to people, people. You know, that's not the way to go. It's not the way to live. I don't care if, you, if you're if you going to be a millionaire because of it or whatever, if you're going to get one up, you know. You know, when you're, you're faced to go to the grave, you can't take all that stuff with you and you're going to have any friends when you're done. So just treat people right the way you want to you know, people to treat you and, and do the best thing you can. You know, if you're in this industry, do what you can. If you can't do it, recommend somebody else who can. Um, that's just going to make you look bigger in the end. You necessarily don't have to be me, 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 me all the time. You know, if you can build a team around you that is better than you, then it's just going to make you better. So stay tuned, guys. There's going to be a lot coming, and thanks for watching.